السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه Dear brothers and sisters We are now reciting Surah An-Nur May Allah fill our hearts, lives, homes, masajid, schools and graves with Nur Say Ameen Surah An-Nur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about it سورة أنزلناها وفرضناها وأنزلنا فيها آيات بينات لعلكم تذكرون A surah which we have revealed, we have prescribed, and we have revealed in it verses that are very clear or clarifying, so you may be reminded. This surah, we can refer to it as the surah of adab. The surah of adab. Adab is the Arabic word for high morals and high character. Mannerisms. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in the very beginning that anyone who tries to accuse anyone of any type of fornication or shameful act of such, and they don't have four witnesses. And the details of witnessing is very vivid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people should be whipped 80 times. And we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't accept from them any testimony. And those are the fasiqeen. Such a severe, stern punishment for someone who uses their mouth irresponsibly. Irresponsibly. A Muslim's dignity, a human's dignity, is extremely important in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in Hajjatul Wada' said, Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'rabakum haramun alaykum ki hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha says that your lives, your property, and your honor is as sacred upon you as the sacred, this day is sacred, this place is sacred, that was Arafat, the day of Arafat, the place of, of Arafat, this sacred month of Dhul Hijjah. So it is important for us to learn the adab of controlling our words and what comes out of our mouth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam explained that a person on the day of judgment or people will be dragged on their faces to hellfire because of what their tongues used to do or say. So very important, the adab, when it comes to people's honor, respect and dignity. And then Allah opens the door for tawbah. For those who used to make these mistakes, now go back and repent. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابٌ حَكِيمٌ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns again for those who slandered our mother Aisha رضي الله عنها وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّا كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when others are speaking, spreading rumors about someone else, the believers are different from the hypocrites. The believers will say, as Allah says, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُ لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينَ When you heard this false slander, the believing men and women said, they first thought positively. They didn't ride the wave of lies and the wave of slander. ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا Internally, they always think positively of others. وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينَ And what the response was, this is clearly a lying, slanderous rumor. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْلَا جَاءُوا عَلَيْهِ بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَإِذْ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِالشُهَدَاءِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ We have standards in Islam. Allah says, if you don't have four witnesses, then those 
are the liars in accordance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important for us. This is standardizing how we should treat things and how we should behave in a society and community. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the adab of entering into a home. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu aw you who have believed la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tastanisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha don't you enter into a home that is not yours until you seek permission and give salam and greet those inside the home dhalikum khayrul lakum that is better for you la'allakum tadhakkarun so you may be reminded If you don't find anyone in there Don't enter until you are given permission And if you are told go back I don't have time now Don't come to that Right now is not a good time فَرْجِعُوا Go back right away. This is better for you, Allah says. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the adab of how to carry ourselves as men and how to carry ourselves as women. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their privates. That is purer for them. And Allah knows everything that you do. So we men are being told by Allah to lower our gaze. We must have this adab. We must have these mannerisms. When we are dealing with our sisters, we need to have respect. Use our sight for the bare minimum needed interaction. And then we don't stare and gaze. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very next ayah addresses the ladies. And he says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ And tell the believing women to lower their gaze and to protect their privates. وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا And to not show their beauty. Meaning things that are other than the face and hands. Except, and Allah gives the exception starting with the husbands and the children and the father and so forth. The way we carry ourselves, the way we behave, our attitude, our eyes, our words, our attire, our demeanor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in this surah to carry ourselves in a very respectable manner. Our beauty should be preserved for those who are allowed to look at it and enjoy it. And those are our spouses. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he teaches us the adab of having children and staff in the home. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us that we must seek permission before we enter into our home, into our parents' bedroom, thalatha marrat. Those who are underage, those who are underage, not over, over the age of puberty, they have to ask all the time for permission before they walk into our, their parents' bedroom. But those who are underage, under puberty, those have to be taught, even those ones have to be disciplined and told, مِنْ قَبْلِ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَحِينَ تَضَعُونَ ثِيَابَكُمْ مِنَ الظَّهِيرَةِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِيَسْتَأْذِنْكُمُ الَّذِينَ مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَبْلُغُوا الْحُلُومَ مِنْكُمْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ مِنْ قَبْلِ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَحِينَ تَضَعُونَ ثِيَابَكُمْ مِنَ الظَّهِيرَةِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ O oh, you who have believed, your slaves and your underage children, 
under the age of puberty that is, must seek permission before they enter into your sleeping chambers three times. Before the, the time of Fajr, the time of Qailula, that afternoon siesta that we don't have here anymore, and then after Isha. So from Isha to Fajr, no one is allowed to enter into the room, under age or not, without asking permission. And during that Qailula time when people used to have that afternoon nap. Those who are age of puberty or older always must seek permission. Doesn't matter what time. But this is for the underage children and when slaves also used to be there. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us manners when we enter into each other's homes. Anybody's home. فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبًا When you enter into your homes, each other's homes that is, and your own homes, greet one another with salam. This greeting of salam is a greeting from Allah Almighty. It is a most blessed and good greeting. It's a gift from Allah. Value that gift. Allah gave you a gift. If someone gave you a gift and they, yani it's a precious gift, a nice Rolex or some sort of nice watch or some sort of nice pendant or some sort of nice gift, you would cherish that. Allah Almighty gave us the best gift and we should cherish that and we should practice that. And it's a dua that we give and a prayer for every person that we see and we greet with. May the peace and blessings and mercy of Allah be upon you. You're asking Allah to give you peace. You're asking Allah to give you blessings, meaning increase your provisions and goodness and health and energy and all of the good, th good things. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to shower you. We should practice that as Muslims. No greeting goes above the greeting of As-salamu alaykum. None. It is the number one greeting. We should be proud of that. We should live that. We should teach that. Our children should not walk in cocooned as if they have social awkwardness. No disrespect. We should teach them these mannerisms to say assalamu alaikum with happiness. You shouldn't walk in your house angry. You should walk into your house with happiness. You're doing a salam. You're making a dua. You're connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making that dua asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invoking His mercy and blessings and peace upon them. And lastly, at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us mannerisms in public gatherings such as this or khutbatul jumu'ah and so forth. And he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَإِذَا كَانُوا مَعَهُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ جَامِعٍ لَمْ يَذْهَبُوا حَتَّى يَسْتَأْذِنُوهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, and if they are with Him in a public gathering, such as this or Jumu'ah and so forth, they would not leave until they seek His permission. They would not leave until they seek His permission. We see still remnants of this, these high standards of mannerisms. When we are sitting, our teachers would teach us. They would model that. That we wouldn't leave the dars, the lecture, or a program, or a gathering without asking, can, we, can you give me permission? I have to go. And they would give an excuse, I have to pick up my child, I have to do this. They give these, this is the akhlaq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testified are the akhlaq of the believers. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَأْذِنُونَكَ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Allah testifies for their level of faith and iman are those who seek your permission before they leave. فَإِذَا اسْتَأْذَنُوكَ لِبَعْضِ شَأْنِهِمْ فَأْذَلْ لِمَنْ شِئْتَ مِنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ When they seek permission to be excused, to handle some of their affairs, give permission to whomever you wish and ask Allah to forgive them. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. لا تجعلوا دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بعضكم بعضكم لبعض بعضكم بعضا. Don't make you, the way you call upon the Prophet 
the way that you call each other. Don't do that. You call each other, Ya Muhammad, Ya Abdullah, Ya Asma. Don't do that. With Rasulullah Sallallahu you can't do that. You have to use his title. Teach this culture and heritage to your children. We are in a shameless society for the most part. People call their dad by their first name, their mom by their first name. What's wrong with you? Show love and respect. You can joke at times, but it's important to have love and respect. You got to know that. It doesn't matter how friendly you are. They are here and you are here. You're not of equals. Rasulullah is not of equals with us. He's not equal to us. Rasulullah is above us. We must, when we call him, say, Ya ayyuhal Nabi, Ya ayyuhal Rasul. Give his title. لا تجعلوا دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بعضكم بعضا قد يعلم الله الذين يتسللون منكم لواذا Allah knows those who show disrespect by leaving the gatherings without seeking permission. Allah says he knows that. If this was not important, Allah wouldn't mention it in the Quran. If this was not of importance, Allah wouldn't mention this in eternal words in the Quran. We must carry ourselves with these mannerisms. They are not to be taken lightly. We must show respect always. We have the highest standard of mannerisms and character if we choose to, con to conform to them, to apply them, to raise our standard by conforming to that and applying. فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah warns, he says, those who disobey the command of Allah should be warned that Allah may give them a very heavy affliction or a very painful punishment in the hereafter. So brothers and sisters, in conclusion, Surah An-Nur is a surah that fills our lives with guidance of adab and akhlaq. And it is important for us to apply that to ourselves and teach that to our children. Watch what we say and only say nice things and good things or keep quiet. And it is important for us to always seek permission before we enter into someone's home. And when we are in our own home, to even have high mannerisms and seek permission before we enter into our parents' home and it is, or, or sleeping quarters. And it is important for us to always greet each other with salam and know and mean what we are saying. And it is important for us to seek permission before we leave our gatherings. And it is important for us to carry our attitude and behavior when we interact with the other gender with the most respectful manners. And we need to also dress in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is prescribed to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, Suratun anzalnaha wa faradnaha. وأنزلنا فيها آيات بينات لعلكم تذكرون نسأل الله نجعلنا من الذين يتذكرون الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه May Allah make us amongst those who listen to what is said and follow the best of it May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us apply these mannerisms and character in our lives and our homes أقول قولي هذا And before we go I'm receiving complaints that some of our brothers and sisters are parking and blocking people's driveways on plantation drive we're talking mannerisms brother sister mannerisms so please don't block anyone please be courteous be patient and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may he give you sabr and may he give you ajr wa qumu ila salatikum wa rahmatullah